Muchas gracias, Nicolás, por tu presentación. Ahora le damos la bienvenida a Sidney de Weaver, Sharon Osepa, Kevin Swift, quienes expondrán sobre la reconstrucción de la infraestructura de la isla San Martín. Bienvenidos, por favor. Muy buenas tardes a todo el mundo. Eh, como algunos de ustedes ya saben, mi nombre es Kevin Swift. Y ahora tenemos, bueno, ante todo quisiera agradecer su asistencia eh, para esta sesión que va a abordar un tema muy importante y muy eh, significativo para la comunidad en el Caribe. Eh, se trata en términos generales de recuperación de desastres naturales y vamos a tener en esta instancia una exposición de la situación de San Martín que ha sido golpeado por eh, un fuerte huracán el año pasado. Así que nosotros en la NIC siempre reconocemos que algunos de nuestros territorios de servicio siempre han sido impactados por el tema de desastres naturales. Tuvimos fuertes terremotos en Haití, en México y en Chile. Y el tema de huracanes siempre golpean al Caribe todos los años. De verdad, ayer fue el inicio de la estación de huracanes que empieza el 1 de mayo y va hasta finales de noviembre. Así que, por lo general, siempre tuvimos instancias de apoyo puntual para eh, algunos miembros de nuestra comunidad. Pero la idea ahora es que este, eh, eh, vamos a establecer una posición institucional como LACNIC para eh, seguir dando apoyo a los esfuerzos de recuperación. Sin más demora, quisiera presentarles ahora el señor Sidney de Weaver, que es el jefe del Departamento Técnico en el Regulador de San Martín, BTP. Y después de Sidney, eh, Shannon Osepa de Internet Society, es el gerente de Asuntos Generales para América Latina y el Caribe, va a compartir algunas observaciones de lo que está haciendo Internet Society al respecto y lo que está pasando en el Caribe. Entonces, primero, eh, Sidney. Eh, ¿Puedo darle un pequeño aplauso? Buenos días a uh, todas las gentes. Uh, muchas gracias, Kevin, por la introdu introducción. Um, and that's all the Spanish I know. <laughs> um, yes, um, it, thanks again um, for having me here um, to explain and give a presentation of what we went through in San Martin last year, 2017, on the 6th of September, with Hurricane Irma and the reconstruction of our telecoms infrastructure and the infrastructure of the island as such. Uh, a brief uh, index of what I'm going to talk about. Uh, oh, one second. Yes, um, I'll give a little breakdown of St. Martin, where we are, who we are, our economy, um, general information of the Bureau of Telecommunications and Post, which, which I work for, um, Hurricane Irma and its aftermath, Uh, the telecoms related issues that um, we suffered um, post um, post hurricane, the rebuilding of our nation and our telecoms infrastructure as well, and the future plans that um, that we learned and, and the, the experience that we had with Irma and how we're going to prepare better for the for the future, and um, some Q and A if um, time permits. Say Martin. Um, Small island, 37 square miles in its totality. It's split between two countries, the Netherlands and France, um, French Saint Martin. 
and Dutch Samaritan. Um, we obtained our autonomy in 2010. Um, normally we were part of a constitution of six islands, which was known as the Nelson Antilles. Um, as time went by, it became smaller and smaller, and in 2010, it ceased to exist as such. So we are now our own island with our own government and everything like that. Our official languages on the Dutch side is Dutch and English. Our population on the Dutch side is about 42,000 people, more or less. Uh, our call calling code is um, 721 International um, North American Normal Plan. Our internet TLD is um, .sx. Uh, our economy, we are basically a uh, tourist-based economy, which provides about plus, more or less about 90% of our economy based on tourism. Uh, we have about um, more or less 2.2 million visitors per year, and that's for crews as well as um, stay over passengers. It's uh, quite a number uh, of people for a small island. Um, logistically, it's, uh, it can be a nightmare, but we welcome the money, so <laughs> we learn to live with it. We have 36 beaches, um, hotels, restaurants, casinos, nightlife, and the sort. Um, Bureau of Telecommunications, um, as um, stated earlier, we are an independent regulatory body for the postal as well as telecoms um, services on the island. Um, and I also, I mentioned too, that in 2010, um, we obtained um, our own bureau as such. We were decentralized from, from Curacao at that point in time. Um, we regulate and develop the telecommunications services, um, postal and, and telecommunication services in St. Martin for the government. Um, and in 2017, we were mandated also to regulate the utility services as well, which um, Irma kind of set us back a little bit, but we're gonna uh, pick it up in 2018 and, and forward. Our main responsibilities, pre our preparation of policies, rules and regulations and laws pertaining to telecommunication and postal services, uh, implement and execute tax established by the Minister of Telecoms and Transportation, um, give advice to the Minister and the Parliament, of course, issuing licenses for radio frequencies and telecom equipment and infrastructure, managing and radio frequencies, uh, issuance of numbers and managing the number and plan for the country, and um, inspections and examination of the telecom, um, telecom equipment and infrastructure. Um, protection of customer uh, consumer interests, of course. And last but not least, and this is pertaining to the subject matter at hand, we are the, um, the head of the e ECF2, which is the emergency support function uh, for telecoms for the island after um, a disaster has occurred. So we are in charge of the de disaster, sorry, telecommunications recovery for the island of St. Martin. Hurricane Irma. Hurricane Irma was a category five plus storm, um, which of the likes has never been seen um, in this part of the world um, for quite a while. It sustained winds over 185 miles per hour and higher. Um, we got a direct hit, the, the eye pass right over St. Martin. So we got the, the, the first half as well as the second half that completely um, devastated the island. It made landfall exactly 22 years um, to the fact uh, we had another hurricane, which is Hurricane Lewis, in September the 5th, 1995, which was also the biggest hurricane for that time. And uh, Irma su surpassed that um, this time around. Um, the lessons learned from Hurricane Lewis at that time was, um, was a great help to us and this time around, whereby a lot of our infrastructure was put on the ground, telecommunications as well as utilities. Um, that provided us the luxury within um, three weeks, roughly, we were back, we were about at least 30% to 40% back uh, on track in terms of um, electricity, water, and telecommunications. Um, again, um, major devastation to the island, uh, no communication in, in immediate aftermath, no water, electricity for, for weeks. Um, roughly 75% of the roofs were lost from the homes. Um, the roads were impassable. Large resorts severely damaged and they are still closed. They are projected to be closed for about a year, a year to two years in recovery. Um, 
schools and government buildings also were, were, were damaged. And um, because of the hotels, which is our biggest industry, um, there was a lot of layoffs. Um, people lost their jobs, of course, because the hotels were not open. And they have been now, they're being retrained to work in the construction area. So we're building the same hotels that they work for, and they will be able to provide for the families. Uh, regarding telecommunications, 30, 35 cell towers were destroyed, which is roughly about 53% of the, the total amount. Um, 13 of them were major and critical towers for our communications between uh, internally as well as externally. So that's to give a scope of what, what we went through. Um, this is some pictures of um, some of the towers, um, myself doing some inspections. Um, to give you an idea what, what we went through. I'm sorry. And going back to it, um, so no communication in the immediate aftermath. So we had, we were in the dark for about um, close to 48 hours. No communication with the outside world whatsoever. Again, 50%, 53% of the critical infrastructure were compromised. The largest mobile provider out of business for almost a month um, because of uh, inf infrastructure issues. Uh, wireless internet services not available. Um, again, because of the major towers that were down limited availability to fix internet. And um, again, the, the availability was the ones that were above ground had issues, but the ones that were underground, so the infrastructure that was underground was up and running within a couple of hours. Most of the radio stations um, went down, of course, because they were attached to, to towers, including the government radio station, uh, no TV broadcast as well. So the government had um, at least um, about 48 hours to 72 hours that they were not be able to contact the residents in terms of getting information out to them. Um, trucking services, which is used by the police, ambulance, fire department, was also out for a couple of hours and it became, um, once they did an assessment and some of the towers, um, they, they were improvisational um, made so that they can have at least some limited communication between the emergency services. Rebuilding our nation, um, BTP executed a full network assessment um, within um, 72 hours after the storm passed. Um, based on that assessment, BTP prepared legislation to institute um, inter-island roaming with zero rating. So the the two major cell phone companies that were that that operate on the island, um, there was a legislation passed, so a ministerial decree that these two companies. Um, would allow each other's clients to roam on, on the network at zero rating, so they would not charge each other for roaming charges. Um, and they also in, in, introduced uh, packages for their, um, for, their, for their clients as well. They, they gave them free, free credit uh, for the duration of the emergency so that they can be able to contact loved ones and um, the outside world as well. Um, provisions are made to allow government to communicate via SMS broadcast to the inhabitants. Uh, relief packages were offered again to the clients from, from the service providers. BTP coordinated relief goods in collaboration with the regulator from Curacao and the Netherlands. Um, they helped us quite a, not, quite a bit in terms of infrastructure. So telecom, so towers, um, cows, and some other telecoms equipment was donated um, to St. Martin from the Netherlands and, um, and their operators out there. They donated um, equipment for us to, to be able to get back online as soon as possible. Uh, B2B collaborated with also with Vodafone Foundation to provide emergency communication. Um, the Vodafone was on the island, I think, within about three to four days of the disaster and provided um, uh, VSAT services via their, their foundation to provide uh, data, very basic data to the community so the government can communicate with inhabitants and inhabitants can com communicate with each other and the outside world as well. Some pictures with the, the Vodafone crew. Uh, 
um, future plans. Um, electronic communication disaster preparedness. We are busy now with a, with a plan in order to ascertain that, that um, in time of need that we can get um, emergency communications up via satellite and other means. Um, and also preparing the telecoms operators to be better resilient in with regards to um, the aftermath of a disaster. Promote one infrastructure concept, and that concept is to, to get um, the operators to build one resilient network whereby um, the restoration of services can, be, can become faster, where resources can be pulled together instead of having everybody doing their own thing separately and there's no coordination. BTP is also monitoring the maintenance and schedules of logs and load factors of all telecom towers. Um, as we have noticed too in our assessment that a lot of the towers are overloaded um, and they were not well maintained over the years. So that's something we would look at very, very strictly as well. Uh, decentralize the utility plants, so water distribution and energy, um, energy segment. Um, as I was, like I said, we also have the, the, cap, the the competence of utility, utility regulation, and we want to decentralize it from one plant to different plants on the island, whereby if um, one plant is destroyed or damaged, that current and water can still be um, had on, on the island. Instead of having from one central location, we'll decentralize it at least in two other locations. Acquiring portable telecom infrastructure for emergency use only. Um, those are the cows and, and cell towers that we're going to be putting in into the island and um, storing them there in case of a disaster that can be deployed. And provide training to key personnel within government to use of emergency telecom equipment such as satellite phones, mobile radio communication, and very importantly, uh, amateur radio communications um, so that we can communicate with the outside world once uh, the major and the, the telecoms um, lines are down, that we can communicate al alternatively. Um, and um, last but not least, um, in closing, I would like to, um, like to publicly, um, at, and, and as I've done in, in several occasions, thank uh, my colleagues from Bureau Telecommunication and Post Curacao, um, as well as the Netherlands for their help during, um, during this, this period in time in St. Martin um, as it relates to, to the hurricane and its aftermath. And also I'd like to thank um, Kevin, Kevin Swift for considering me as a speaker here at LATNIC and to provide you guys with our experience and hopefully um, can help you uh, design your own disaster, telecommunications disaster plan going forward in your respective countries. And also last, really last but not least, um, I would like to implore the audience today to not forget our brothers and sisters on Dominica, Puerto Rico, US and British Virgin Islands who also have been hit but has not as been fortunate as St. Martin to recover as fast as we did. Um, that um, any assistance as you can render them, please do so and keep them in your prayers as we go into another hurricane season which is projected to be worse than the one before. And um, for this, I thank you. Um, if you have any questions, um, if we have time, we can answer them. If not, um, I'm on the floor, I'm available. Just grab me and I'll be more than happy to assist. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cindy. I think it was a very poignant presentation that you made. And of course, as I have commented before, this is just the start of a conversation that we would like to continue having here in terms of how we approach uh, disaster and resiliency and bringing back infrastructure within the LACNI community. We are very short on time, but I'm just going to uh, pass the floor over to Shernan, who's just going to give you a very, very brief uh, overview of some of the activities that he is involved in on the question of resilience and disaster recovery. Okay, muchas gracias, Kevin. Voy a estar muy um, breve. Básicamente, ¿por qué estamos hablando de desastre en Internet Society? Internet Society está enfocando básicamente en dos áreas principales. Estamos enfocando en la parte de acceso, acceso a Internet, y también la parte de confianza en la Internet. Acerca de la parte de acceso a Internet, es muy importante que sabemos que hay algunas formas que la gente quizás no tenga acceso a Internet, quizás a causa de de desastres naturales, pero también a, a causa a veces que 
quizás lo que los gobiernos está, están haciendo. Esa también es una forma de no dar acceso a la comunidad. Pero me gustaría enfocar ahora más en la parte de desastres naturales. Nosotros en Internet Society lo que estamos haciendo es de enfocar cómo podemos mantener las infraestructuras conectadas también después de desastres naturales. Y por eso tenemos o estamos trabajando en estos, estos momentos en un, un, en un programa. Lo que vamos a hacer, vamos a trabajar con personas que tengan experiencia um, o de países que ya han pasado durante estos um, desastres. No es un asunto simplemente de invitar personas a, a, a ir a es, estas áreas de desastres, pero queremos trabajar con personas que, que tengan experiencia en ese sentido. Por ejemplo, estamos enfocando en países como Chile, Ecuador, México y también Haití, porque ahí um, tenemos expertos que ya han pasado durante na um, desastres naturales. Entonces, tenemos un llamado para estos expertos. Nosotros queremos hablar con ustedes, nosotros queremos ustedes para, para ser parte de un grupo de voluntarios que, que puedan ayudar cuando um, hay desastres en nuestras áreas. También estamos enfocando en un parte de, de, de donación. Tenemos dentro de ISOC, Internet Society, un programa que se llama Beyond the Net y vamos a utilizar este programa para que podamos ayudar a um, la región afectada. Estamos enfocando primeramente en nuestros miembros capítulos y también um, uh, miembros organizacionales, pero donde no, no hay miembros, um, donde no tenemos miembros o um, capítulos, eso no significa que no vamos a trabajar con, con, con esta, estos países. Lo que vamos a hacer, vamos a trabajar en esos sentidos con, con um, organizaciones no gubernamental, así que... Um, a que podamos tener la, la parte de, de, de sincronización. Entonces, en este momento, um, dentro de Internet Society, estamos trabajando, por ejemplo, con la organización de Canto. Canto es eh, la organización de operadores del Caribe y también con um, estados de Caribe del Este, especialmente con gobiernos. Y dentro de algún, algunas semanas vamos a presentar un reporte final a gobiernos del Caribe acerca de um, qué ellos tienen que hacer para que um, podamos mejorar las um, infraestructuras um, de telecomunicación y también de Internet. Muchas veces estamos hablando de Internet, pero sin telecomunicaciones no podemos tener Internet. Así que tenemos que enfocar en la parte de, de telecomunicación. Entonces, um, eso es lo que quería compartir con ustedes, haciendo un llamado a todos ustedes que um, no Simple, no siempre es asunto de dar dinero, pero sabemos que tenemos um, capacidades también dentro de esta sala y nos, nosotros queríamos um, conversar con ustedes, así que ustedes también pueden colaborar con nosotros, así que um, podamos ayudar la región afectada. Gracias. Muchísimas gracias, Shernan. Y lamentablemente no tenemos tiempo para conversar aquí en la sala, pero por supuesto seguimos aquí durante el resto de la semana. Entonces, no duden acercarse de nosotros si hay algunos expertos aquí en la comunidad que quieren saber cómo involucrarse, eh, serían bienvenidos. Y muchas gracias a ustedes por eh, esta oportunidad para exponer sobre esta situación de desastres naturales sobre todo en el Caribe. Muchas gracias a todos. Muchas gracias por su participación.